president is angry because the days of worshiping crowds are just gone. I think that's all he likes in politics. Hey, it's clear he can't help himself. I guess Brian Williams couldn't help himself with some stories. I have no idea what's going on there. But, but this president, I can tell you, lives in like this imaginary world. Everybody is at fault but him. You know, he, you know, hovers above us mere mortals. And uh, that's why getting on our high horse was such a revealing comment last week. Anyway, his latest venture into this imaginary world, an interview that he gives Vox.com, V-O-X.com, with Urza Klein. And in it, Obama is asked a lot of stuff. One, is, one of the questions is about the causes of polarization. And this is what he says about polarizing political impact we have in the country. So a lot of it has to do with the fact that the balkanization of the media means that we just don't have a, a common place where we get common facts and a common worldview the way we did, say, 20 or 30 years ago. And that just keeps on accelerating, you know. I'm not the first to observe this, but you've got Fox News, Rush Limbaugh folks, and you've got the MSNBC folks, and then I don't know where Vox falls into this, but, but you guys are, I guess, or the brainiac nerd types, but the point is that technology, which brings the world to us, also allows us to narrow our point of view, and that's contributed to it. So the criticism, every other past president, from the beginning of newspapers, there's always been newspapers, when they were far more influential than they are now, that had political points of view. Competing papers, one conservative, one liberal, one point of view, another, this, this is nothing new in American history. Nor is a politician's anger at media for being actually truthful and analytical of what they do. And the president goes on. He said, Ger gerrymandering contributes to polarization. He said, there's no incentive for most members of Congress, on the House side at least, in congressional districts to even bother trying to appeal. And a lot of it has to do with just unlimited money. This is a guy who's raised more money than anybody in the history of politics. So people are absorbing an entirely different reality when it comes to politics, even though uh, the way they're living their lives and interacting with each other isn't that polarizing. So my advice to future president is increasingly try to bypass the traditional venues that create divisions and try to find new venues within this new media that are quirkier, less predictable. Maybe that explains why he did the interview with the YouTube sensation lady who takes baths in milk and uh, Fruit Loops. Maybe that explains that interview, or the other YouTube people he interviewed, or Vox.com. So in other words, the contributors to polarization, Fox News, talk radio, Rush Limbaugh, gerrymandering, money in politics, technology, it's narrowed our world point of view. You know, would it be disrespectful of the president to maybe point out the one thing, the one person that he left off the list as a cause of polarization? Maybe that would be him. Yeah, him. Now, some of the factors Obama cites in the interview probably have contributed to it, but let me, let's, let's look at the hard truth that he ignores here. I will tell you that Obama has been the most polarizing president in the history of Gallipoli. The nation is more divided now than it was before he took office. It's not coincidental, by the way. It's not simply a part of an irreversible trend. The president, it's been part of his strategy. He distorts, he slanders, he libels all opponents. He and his allies try and do it, they do it regularly, and they do it in campaigns and out of campaigns. When Obama's not lamenting the polarized state of American politics, let's see, he could be found accusing Republicans of being social Darwinists, members of the Flat Earth Society, putting their party ahead of their country, wanting dirty air and dirty water, and saying Republicans want autistic and Down syndrome children and old people to quote fend for themselves. He said all those things. What's happening down in New Orleans? Where's your dollar? Tells me the bullet hasn't been taken out. Tells me that somehow the people down in New Orleans, they don't care about as much. Governor Romney promised that sometime between taking the Oval Office and going to the inaugural ball, he'd sit right down, grab a pen, and kick seven million young people off their parents' plan by repealing health reform. Maybe we should call his plan Romney doesn't care. But my main message is, is uh, to the parents of uh, Trayvon Martin. You know, if I had a son, he'd look like Trayvon. You don't want to have to choose between, uh, let's say, do I, do I close funding for the disabled kid or the poor kid? They have tried to sell us this trickle-down, tax-cut, fairy dust before. Don't move, vote! Vote! Voting's the best revenge. I never 
revenge. We, we don't mind the Republicans joining us. They can go come for the ride, but they got to sit in back. The problem is, is that the way Bush has done it over the last eight years is to take out a credit card from the Bank of China in the name of our children, driving up our national debt so that we now have over nine eighteen point debt one trillion that oh, we sorry. are going to have to pay back. That's irresponsible. irresponsible. It's unpatriotic. And then you got their plan, which is let's have dirtier air, dirtier water. Less people with health insurance. Many are poor children. Some are middle class families who have children with autism or Down syndrome. Some of these kids with disabilities are, the, the, the disabilities are so severe that they require 24 hour care. These are the Americans we'd be telling to fend for themselves. This congressional Republican budget is something different altogether. It is a Trojan horse. It is thinly veiled social Dar Darwinism. If you've been successful, you don't you didn't get that on your own. You didn't build that. If you've got a business, that you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. Let me tell you something. If some of these folks were around when Columbus set sail, they must have been founding members of, of the Flat Earth Society. They, they would not have believed that the world was round. Flat Earth Society. I don't make these comments up. I'm, this is what he said. Remember, his opponents, you know, get revenge. They're, they're not wrong. They're enemies. 2012, let's see, Biden went out there, said Republicans want to put African Americans back in chains. Obama's top aides and allies implied Governor Romney was a felon. Flat out stated he was responsible for the cancer death of a steel worker's wife. All to get reelected. All a pack of lies. In addition to that, you got Obama's chief defenders, including Eric Holder, his attorney general. They don't ever tire in accusing Obama critics of being racist and bigots. And yet Obama, not once, has he ever reprimanded them? Has Obama ever, ever given us a sister soldier era of big government end of welfare as we know it moment where he really reaches across the aisle aisle ever i can't think of one you know it's, it's not enough it's never enough for the differences in politics to be based on genuine differences in philosophy no it's his opponents have to be turned into moral monsters who don't want to feed the poor or fund medical research who delight in the suffering of others that's a dishonest thing for anybody to do, especially the president with the bully pulpit. And he compounds the problem by portraying himself as he's a victim of polarization and all in the effort to heal the divisions in America. And, you know, there's not been no greater divider in chief. Obviously, this Frank Marshall Davis, Alinsky, Acorn, Reverend Wright, heirs and Dorn background, he never, he clings to it like it's life itself. What he has been conditioned into thinking and indoctrinated into believing. He loves that hominem, the hominem side of politics, just like Alinsky. You know, and they practice it with him and his, his team with uncommon skill. He can't govern his way out of a paper bag, but when it comes to libeling opponents, he excels. He's great at it. So the next time you hear the poor president lamenting polarization, remember what I just played for you. Let me say one other thing. As a personal point of privilege, if you will, about Fox News, the idea that Fox News is the mirror image of M MSNBC is ludicrous. Fox News has some of the most talented, hardworking, gifted journalists, serious, respected, highly popular news organization. I'm, I am not a part of, I am the editorial page. Nobody hides that I'm a conservative that has a show. It's a show. They have news during the day, and Brett Bear's a newsman, Shep Smith's a newsman, you know. Then there's a few of us that have shows. There's a difference. You damn right. No. Yeah. But then of course you got NBC, let's see. A partisan joke where on a good night you can fill a high school football stadium. You know, you got Al Sharpton. And you got Eddie. You damn yeah. right. Dick Cheney's heart's a political football. We ought to rip it out and kick it around and stuff it back in it. The yeah. hell with the Republicans. No. They're anti-American. They're psycho talkers. They don't care. And Harry, you are ballless. He is an enemy of the country, in my opinion. Dick Cheney is. He is an enemy of the country. He's making it harder for those who are in power right now to protect the country. President Obama is going to be visiting Chop.
the RPG. Either you saw a body floating and you got dysentery, or you didn't see a body floating and get dysentery. People make mistakes. How's it?